This is the Infinix Zero X, a successor to the Zero 8 from Infinix last year. It borrows a couple of features from the Infinix concept phone we saw a few months ago. Sleek design, 64 megapixel OIS camera, a periscope lens with up to 60x zoom, an AMOLED display with 120Hz refresh rate and other interesting specifications. This is an interesting device. What up guys, Izzy here and welcome to the channel. So I have here with me the Infinix Zero X, one of two devices Infinix is launching later today. I've actually had this one for a couple of days, I've been testing it. There's also the Zero X Pro, which is a device actually not very different from this one, except that it has a higher 108 megapixel camera and uses an in-display fingerprint scanner, while this one uses a side-mounted fingerprint scanner. The Zero X is going to be retailing for 144,600 Naira, while the Zero X Pro should be retailing for around 179,600 Naira. And for that price, here is your unboxing experience. The Infinix Zero X comes in a surprisingly long box. I initially thought it contained something extra, but there was nothing really, so I'm not sure why the extra space. You get complete accessories with the Zero X and that includes a print store screen protector and a black rubber case, which is actually very nice. It carries the now design we saw on the back of the Infinix concept phone. Infinix still gives us a nice pair of earphones, something the competition omits these days. Yes, what you get is a 45W fast charger and not a 160W as teased by the concept phone. From my test, the 45W charger is pretty fast. It took about 11 minutes to charge from 0 to 30% and in 20 minutes I had 50% charge. In about an hour and 5 minutes it was fully charged up to 100%. The color I have here is called the Starry Silver. You also get it in Nebula Black, but I think I'll go with this color. It is lovely. Now, the Zero X has a dual glass design. You have glass on the display and glass on the back. The back glass has a somewhat frost or matte finish, not much of a fingerprint magnet. The cameras are a triple setup placed in a nice bump to the top left. You will notice the Zero X has a boxy design, much similar to what we see on the iPhones, but the edges are not as sharp. The frame is glossy plastic. The fingerprint scanner sits flush on the right frame just underneath the volume rocker keys and doubles as a power button. Not the best implementation if you ask me. It is easy to miss, you might touch it and not even notice it is there. Though it is not difficult to use, it is responsive and accurate. The Infinix Zero X has the SIM slot on the left frame. It is a dual nano SIM card slot and also accepts a micro SD card for storage expansion. We don't get stereo speakers on the Zero X, something you might find a bit disappointing, but the mono speaker is actually really good. But that doesn't change the fact that at this price point, stereo speakers is essential. The rest of the ports are lined up next to the speaker grill, that is the headphone jack and USB-C ports. The Zero X feels pretty lightweight when held, I actually thought it would be heavier. So if you remember, a couple of months ago we all saw the Infinix concept phone and a lot of people were excited about it and even went on to assume that the Zero X or X Pro is going to be that concept phone. But that is not the case here. The concept phone had a curved AMOLED display as opposed to the flat display we got on the Zero X and X Pro and also came with a 160W super fast charging as opposed to the 45W charging we got here. However, that is not to say the Zero X falls short in any way. It's actually a pretty solid device and actually has a good price. It has 8GB of RAM and 128GB of internal storage. Powered by the MediaTek Helio G95 processor, 64MP triple rear cameras which we are going to get into later. It has a 4500mAh battery and supports 45W fast charging. On the display side of things, the Infinix Zero X has a 1080p AMOLED display, a really good looking one at that. It is 6.67 inches tall with a screen to body ratio of 86.5%. It has a center hole punch for a 16MP selfie camera. It is a display with a 120Hz refresh rate, which is a first from Infinix. With this 120Hz refresh rate, you will find operating this device to be pretty satisfying, especially if you are coming from a device with a lower refresh rate display. You get smoother animations and great scrolling experience. However, if battery life is your priority, you might want to stick to 60Hz. The Infinix Zero X having an AMOLED display means you get vibrant colors and deeper blacks. It has always on display with a couple of customization options. Just above the display is a front facing flash which can be used for nighttime selfies, that is, if you like taking selfies at night. On software, the Infinix Zero X runs on Android 11 right out of the box with Infinix Custom XOS 
which has seen some major improvements compared to what we are used to. You will still get bloatware apps, but ads are now less aggressive or intrusive. You might get some occasionally, but you can easily disable them. XOS 7.6 is a feature-packed UI with a lot of customization options. You get features like peak proof, WhatsApp mode, game mode, theft alert, and a notable addition is the voice assistant Folax. I hope I pronounced that correctly. It could be Folax or Fola, whatever. Set an alarm for 3 a.m. An alarm for tomorrow 3 has been set for you. Open Facebook. It is not the most advanced Android assistant out there, but it does a pretty good job at carrying out basic commands. It can tell you the weather, it can set an alarm, it can take pictures or even send WhatsApp messages. You can set it to trigger whenever you hold the power button for a split second. When it comes to gaming, the Infinix Zero X doesn't fall short. It handles gaming quite well by virtue of its processor, that is the MediaTek Helio G95. It has a Mali G76 for the GPU. I did a couple of gaming sessions, particularly playing Call of Duty Mobile Battle Royale and it handled it well with no heating. I played it on high graphics setting and maximum frame rates. I'm quite satisfied with the gaming performance here and you will find it to be up to expectations. Now the cameras, a major selling point of the Infinix Zero X and I'm sure you already have your expectations. It has a 60 megapixel selfie camera on the display. On the rear we have the triple setup of a 64 megapixel main camera with optical image stabilization. An 8 megapixel telephoto camera with 5x optical zoom and up to 60x hybrid zoom. And an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera with autofocus which also doubles for macro photography. Let's start first with the zoom camera as I believe that's what most will want to see first. You will find that it actually does a pretty good job. You have the option for 5x zoom right there in the camera app and if you tap and hold the 5x you will get the option to go all the way up to 60x. At 5x is where you max out for good quality, anything past that won't be as crisp but it is good enough. This is a feature you are only going to get on flagship devices which cost at least twice the price of the Zero X. Still on the periscope lens you have super moon, that is the mode to switch to if you intend to capture the moon. I didn't get a full moon but I guess this works. You will need to zoom from 25x upwards to properly capture the moon. From the viewfinder you can see it does the job pretty well, however I think it still needs some work with the processing of the final shot, hopefully it will be better with a couple of software updates, but I'm impressed for a device at this price point. The rear cameras of the Infinix Zero X does a good job to capture color accurate pictures with wide dynamic range. Both the main and ultra wide cameras take great pictures that look natural. It uses its ultra wide cameras for macro photography and it takes some good looking macro shots. The super night mode performance is impressive, you get better low light shots that look sharp and maintains detail. The Infinix Zero X is able to shoot videos up to 4K at 30 frames per second on both its selfie and the rear cameras. Its main camera has optical image stabilization which allows you to get stable footage. Okay, this is the Infinix Zero X. This is a video from its selfie camera. This is what it can do from the 16 megapixel selfie camera. Currently shooting at 4K 30 fps. You can do that from both the selfie and the rear cameras, and it has no stabilization on the selfie camera, but it has OIS on the 64 megapixel rear camera. What do you think? The Infinix Zero X is an interesting device and one I actually like. It has a lovely design, it is fairly priced, it has an impressive camera system, a great display with a 120Hz refresh rate, 45 watts fast charging and a couple of other features that makes this great value for money. It is a significant upgrade from the Infinix Zero 8 and a sign of better things to come from Infinix for the Zero series. What are your thoughts on the Infinix Zero X? I'll be looking forward to your comments in the comment section. I'll also be reviewing the Zero X Pro if I can get my hands on one. Like I mentioned earlier, there is not much that separates them. They have the same processor, same RAM, mostly same specifications except the 108 megapixel cameras on the Zero X Pro and an optical fingerprint scanner. So that is all from me on the Infinix Zero X. Do give this video a thumbs up if you find it helpful and also consider subscribing to the channel. Peace out.